Good morning and welcome to St Matthew's Church, Rich Hill. Uh, this morning we're listening in as David prays to God and finds his prayers heard and answered. Uh, our opening song today uh, reminds us that the Lord is only a prayer away. One day I heard the ancient story Of a cross on a hill far away And now I've a friend up in glory And he's only a prayer Psalm 28, David prays in this way. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. We cry to the Lord for mercy as we confess our sins to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you 
in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. As Psalm 28 continues, David says this, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Lord, we thank you that you hear our cry for mercy, that you meet us with your mercy and greet us in your grace. Receive our thanks and praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We respond with praise as we hear Psalm 100, a psalm for giving thanks. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Mary is going to read Psalm 28 for us. The reading is from Psalm 28. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I shall be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbours, but harbour malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back upon them what they deserve. Since they show no regard for the works of the Lord, and what his hands have done. He will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would not be silent, but that you would speak to us now. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A while back, I heard of a young visitor to St. Matthew's. Uh, they normally go to a different church, uh, but they were here for a service. Uh, and afterwards, they asked one of, the, one of their relatives, why did they say in that church, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer? Because we know that God will always hear our prayers. Now, that child has been very well taught. We know that God hears our prayers. And yet sometimes it might seem as if he hasn't. Have you ever found yourself in that position? That you're praying about some situation that you find yourself in or you're praying for someone and it seems as if God either hasn't heard it or isn't answering. Well, that's the situation that David finds himself in at the start of Psalm 28. 
in verses 1 and 2, he is calling for help. His situation is desperate, and yet it appears as if God either hasn't heard or isn't answering. To you I call, O Lord my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me, for if you remain silent, I shall be like those who have gone down to the pit. David is Trusting the Lord, he knows him as, O Lord, my rock. And yet it seems as if God has turned a deaf ear to him. He's talking to God, but is his prayer getting through? Is God really hearing him? Because if God doesn't listen to his prayer, then we're in an even more desperate situation. Where else could we turn if God turns a deaf ear to us? It would be bad enough if God isn't listening. But David says it would be even worse if God wasn't answering, wasn't speaking. A few weeks ago, I had a little mishap when we were recording our Sunday service. Everything seemed to be fine when I left the church until I got back home to the study and the video was all picture and no sound. It was entirely useless. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe you wouldn't have minded that. It would have saved you from having to mute me yourself. I ended up having to record a second time. But David said, For if you remain silent, if God remains silent, I shall be like those who have gone down to the pit. If God doesn't speak, if God doesn't answer, then we simply have no hope. We would be entirely lost. Do you see how urgent his situation is? He's calling for help hoping that God won't be deaf to his cries or give him the silent treatment. And his call for help continues in verse 2. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. David is crying for mercy, for God to not give him what he deserves. David is calling for hope, uh, both vocally uh, and physically, uh, as he lifts up his hands towards the most holy place. For the third psalm in a row now, David focuses on the temple uh, or the tabernacle uh, where God's presence is found. Uh, The most holy place uh, was the inner tent uh, where the Ark of the Covenant at God's throne was placed only on one day of the year and only the high priest could enter in to make atonement for the sins of the people but as Dale Ralph Davis says in in his little commentary while David couldn't himself go into the most holy place he knows that his prayers can enter there and so he is calling to the Lord for help. And as he does so, he also calls to the Lord for justice. Here's what he says Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbours, but harbour malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back upon them what they deserve. He calls for mercy for himself, but justice for these wicked people. He doesn't want to suffer the same fate as them. He doesn't want to be dragged away with them, lumped in with them. He gives examples of their wickedness, how they speak cordially with their neighbours, they're nicey-nicey to their face, 
uh, all the while harboring malice in their hearts. And the repeated word in this call for justice is repay. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back upon them what they deserve. David's hands are lifted up in prayer, but their hands have done evil. Now, it's not that David's hands haven't done evil as well, but he is asking for mercy to not receive what he deserves. Now that might strike you as unfair. How come David wants mercy for himself but justice for these other people? Doesn't that seem strange? Well, as verse 5 shows, they don't want to receive mercy. They're not interested in it at all. He continues, since they show no regard for the works of the Lord and what his hands have done, he will tear them down and never build them up again. Their hands have done evil, but they also show no regard for what God's hands have done. God made us. God fashioned each one of us, but they don't really care for God's creation or for other people made in God's image. And they're not particularly bothered about God's works of salvation. And so God will tear them down and never build them up again. Notice that David doesn't sort out the evildoers himself. No, he leaves it to God and asks God for justice. David has called for help and called for justice. In verse 6, we find that God hasn't been deaf and hasn't been silent, but has heard and helped him. And so David calls for celebration in verse 6. A praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. It's quite the turnaround, isn't it, from the start of the psalm. The Lord has heard him. And helped him. And that leads David to burst forth in praise, his heart leaping for joy, singing songs of thanks. Do you see how David describes God? The Lord is my strength and my shield. It's personal as he trusts in the Lord. But it's more than just personal. The call for celebration is corporate. As verses 8 and 9 widen the scope from just David to all of God's people. This personal song is the song of all of God's chosen people. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people And bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. The Lord isn't just my strength. He is the strength of his people. I'm really looking forward to having you join me here again in a few weeks time. So that once again we can be together as the people of God. We might not be able to sing together immediately, but hopefully it won't be long until we can do that as well. Here in this psalm we find the Lord Jesus. The Lord who is the strength of his people, 
who, in a phrase used in our morning prayer service, saves his people and blesses his inheritance. He is our shepherd, the one who cares for us, who gave himself for us by stretching out his hands on the cross, surrendered to cruel nails. in order to take away all the wrong things that we have done and to give us his mercy. And did you notice the last few words? It says, be their shepherd and carry them forever. What a contrast to the wicked who will be dragged away For the Lord's people, we will be carried by him forever. Now in these days, we are called to pray for our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us, to pray for those who do not know the Lord, that they too would receive mercy. And so let's commit ourselves to pray for them. But in the end, justice will be done. Either Jesus will have paid for our sins, or we will bear them ourselves. Well, our young theologian was so right. God does hear our prayers. But for him to hear them, we need to pray them. We have this promise that when we call, he will answer. He delights to show mercy. That he is our shepherd who will carry us forever. Do you need to call on him today? Don't delay. Call for mercy and you will call for celebration when he answers your call. In a moment, I'm going to pray just a very simple prayer and I invite you to join with me the second time through. I'm going to say this. Lord, have mercy on me. As I call to you for help. Amen. And if that's your prayer today. Then pray it with me now. Lord have mercy on me. As I call to you for help. Amen. We recite the works of the Lord. What his hands have done as we declare our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we begin our time of prayer, we use the versicles and responses from morning prayer, including the one Uh, taken from Psalm 28. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, And bless those whom you have chosen. 
Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, O Lord, and blessed are those who observe and keep your law. Help us to seek you with our whole heart, to delight in your commandments, and to walk in the glorious liberty given us by your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God, we thank you that you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. Stir our hearts to pray to you, not as a last resort, but as our first priority. Help us now as we pray to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace given to us so freely in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, as we seek to witness to your works and share the good news of Jesus with our families and friends, our neighbours and colleagues, with this village and across the world. Have mercy on those who hear and bring them to call for mercy and to trust in you for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those who suffer today and ask you to be their strength and their shield. Care for them as their shepherd and carry them forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Thank you for sharing in our service today. All our latest updates can be found on our Facebook page, especially as we move closer to opening again for congregational worship at the end of this month, the Lord willing. In the meantime, keep safe and keep trusting in the Lord. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing song celebrates that the King of love, my shepherd, is. Streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul, he purifies. And where the green as pastures grow, my aching heart, he satisfies. My aching heart, he satisfies.
Still, your cross before.